Okay, this video is practicing our compound interest that we've learned in all our formulas. So this lab, we're going to talk about especially these two formulas. And I'm going to do the one on the right first. And this is the one we've been talking about where we are doing our compounding. We have our balances in dollars. Our principal, P stands for principal in dollars. R is our nominal rate in decimal form. And N is the number of times of compounding per year. So I know we've done notes before about talking about how many times a year things are being compounded, and that's the one formula you're going to practice. The other one we have over here is a continuous formula, and I'd like to say the PERT formula because that's what it reminds me of, PERT shampoo. But this is the balance equals a principal E to the RT, and when you look at this, um, the E stands for continuous, so this is a continuous compounding formula. So this means it, co it compounds every minute, every second of every day. And everything else still stands the same, except you don't have to worry about adding the 1 plus R and that type of things, but everything stands for the same thing. So this is actually the most you could ever compound, and I really don't know of any bank that does this, but it's one of the formulas that we need to know. So we're going to go through each one of these problems, and I, I might have to do another video if this gets too long, but I'm going to kind of go through each one of these with you, all right? So this first one says, if $5,000 is deposited into an account paying a nominal interest rate of 4% per year, how much is in the account 10 years later if the interest is compounded? So annually is one time per year. Quarterly is four times per year, monthly is 12 times per year, and continuously is base E. Okay, so let's kind of go through and plug in everything they gave us. They told us how much we were putting in, they told us the interest rate, and they told us how many years they wanted to check out what was going on. So the two formulas we're going to use are above, and you can't see them. It's B equals P, 1 plus R over N to the NT. The other one is going to be B equals PERT. P is E to the RT. All right. So the first one is annually. So the balance after 10 years is going to be I put in $5,000. One plus the rate is 4%. Change it to a decimal. And then annually is one time per year. And it's one times the 10 years because it's NT. Okay. I'm going to change colors. Quarterly, same thing. Balance is 5,000. 1 plus 0.04 quarterly is four times a year, four times the 10 years. What does that give us? The next one is monthly. The balance is 5,000. 1 plus 0.04. And monthly is 12 times per year, so it's 12 times 10. See the pattern? The next one is the balance. Now, this is the principle of 5,000. Now, this is base E. I'm going to put the rate right here. So the continuous takes care of the base E to the 10. All right. So now let's put in what we found. Now, remember, that's money, so you can go two decimal places for cents. You should try this, but this is $7,401.22. And when I plug this in, it's $7,444.32. Oh, it's more money. Monthly, this is $7,454.16. And the last one is $7,459.12. And I want you to look at how it's increasing every single time because I'm compounding more all the way to the continuous using the same in the same principle, the same rate, the same amount of time is just based on how many times a year you're compounding. All right, so number two is very similar to number one. It says suppose a thousand dollars is deposited into an account paying an interest at a nominal rate of eight percent per year, find the balance three years later if it's compounded. So here I want you to do number two. Number two is very much like number one. You're going to go through monthly, which is 12 times per year, weekly, 52 times per year, daily, 365 times per year, and continuously, 
which is base E. So I want you to work on number two. It's very similar to number one, and you should see as you go down that the amount of money that you have is going to increase because you're increasing your compounding. All right, number three. Number three says a bank account. I like number three because it's, um, it is very interesting because you're looking at it as a percentage. It says a bank account pays 6% annual interest rate. As the number of compounding periods increases, the effective interest rate earned also rises, which makes sense because the more you're compounding, the more interest you're getting on your interest, your rate is going to go up. It says find the annual interest rate earned by the account if the interest is compounded and they want us to do quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily. So we could still use our formula. So I'm going to kind of do one, two, three, four, set this up. So let's do number one first. Use the same formula, but I just don't know what the principle is. That's okay. You can still use it to plug in what you know. So this is going to be one plus the interest is 6%. The first one is 12 times a year because it's, excuse me, quarterly because it's four times per year. So it's over four and it's going to be four times the time. Well, I don't know. They didn't tell me how many years. They didn't tell me what I'm putting in and that's okay. All you need to do is just plug that in your calculator to figure out what would be the interest that you'd actually earn. When I do that, I get this decimal, 1.06136. What does that mean? Well, I subtract the one and move my decimal place. That means I actually earned 6.14% on my money, not just plain old six, because it was compounded quarterly. Now, I want you to look at this. As I go down and, and increase the compounding, I would assume perhaps that my interest rate would rise as well. Let's see, let's do number two. B equals P. It's the same information, except I'm going to change for two. It's monthly. So I'm actually going to put this in my calculator right here in this spot. And when I do, I get 1.06168. Subtract the one, move your decimal place over, I get 6.17%. Do you see how that increased the percentage rate just because I'm compounding it monthly now, which is 12 times per year versus four times per year? So three and four are very similar. You're going to plug those in. You're actually going to figure out what the percentage is. I'm just going to warn you a little bit between weekly and daily. There's not a huge change, um, but it does increase a little bit. So I want you to work on the weekly, which is 52 times per year and the daily, which is 365 times per year. Go ahead and put it in that formula and come up with your percent. Number four, I really like this one. Really like this one because it, it lets you look at what's happening when you in, do investments. So I have three different investments. So let's kind of set this up. I have investment A, I have investment B, and I have investment C. These three different investments are given. Rank them from best to worst, worst in terms of rate of return. So this is important, and then we're going to explain our reasoning. So let's set this up. Investment A is I deposited $875 at 13.5% per year, and it's compounded daily for two years. So they kind of gave all our information. Let's plug it in our formula. So I have B equals $875. 1 plus the rate is 13.5%, so that's 1.135 all over. It's 365 days a year because it's daily. And I'm going to raise it to 365, and they said for two years. Okay, so I'm going to actually plug that in my calculator. When I do, I get the balance to be $1,146.16. So that's what I make when I do exactly what it says. Let's look at B. Investment B, I actually put $1,000 in. Okay. It's going to be at 6.7%, so that's 0 0.067. And it's compounded continuously. Oh, I'm not even going to use this formula. It's compounded continuously. So we're going to use base E. 
All right, so sometimes I get going on that. So base E, it's compounding continuously at 0.067. All, you put the rate here, and then you put the two years there. So when I put my, my what I got for my balance there, I get $1,143.39. Okay, so that's investment B. Investment C is my balance is my principal is 1050 and it's 4.5 percent con compounded monthly so it's going to be 1 plus 0. 0.045 over 12 raised to the 12 times 2 this should be getting easier when i do i get 1148 dollars and 69 cents so if I were looking at this, I said, hmm, which one has the most money? Well, it looks like C has the most money. Then the next one is A and then B. Well, that's true. But I wanted you to remember this. I said the rate of return up here. And you want to explain your reasoning. So if you look at C, I do have the most money. But didn't I put the most money in? Because this one's 1050 This one's 1000 This is 875 So you want to know the best rate of return. So you want to know which one gave you the most money back from what you put in there. So what you have to do is basically take that initial value and subtract it. So you're going to take what you made and subtract it by what you put in and see which one was the best one. So I'm going to take the $1,146.16. I'm going to subtract the $875 that I made to see what did I actually make on that one and I made $271.16. So this is what I'm gonna do for each one to see which one was my best rate of return. All right, so the next one, I'm gonna take the $1,143.39. I'm gonna subtract the $1,000 that I actually invested. When I do, I made on this one $143.39. Oh, I didn't do as well on this one. That's my rate of return. My third one is I'm going to take the $1,148.69 I made. I'm going to subtract the $1,000 that I invested. When I do, I have, oh, it's $1,050 I invested. Sorry about that, $1,050. So let's erase that. I invested $1,050. When I do, I have, I made $98.69. Sense. So actually, the one I thought was the best at first is actually the worst. Okay, this one is actually the worst. Which one was the best? This one was actually the best. And this one was in the middle. So if I was going to rank them, I would say A was the best, then B, then C. And the reason why is my rate of return was more for this one from what I invested all the way to this one. So I just wanted you to see that because that's quite interesting. I, I do love that problem. I love it, I love it. Okay, let's look at the next problem that we have on here. So C, it says rank the best following of these deposit options from best to worst. So this is very similar, but now you're going to do it using just interest rates. So we're gonna do bank A, bank B and bank C. I'm going to kind of set this up for you and do it for you so that you can see that you can also tell without even knowing how much you put in by looking at your interest rate. So this first one is compounded daily 7%. I said, okay, B equals P. I know none of that, but I can fill this in 1 plus 0 0.07 all over 365 because it was daily raised to the 365 times T. All I'm going to do is put this in right here in my calculator. I don't need to know how much I put in. I don't need to know the time. I just want to know, can I figure what this out as an interest rate is? And I do. I, when I put that in, I get 1.0725. Subtract the one. Move your decimal place over. So this one I actually made a 7.25% rate. Okay? B is... The same thing, B equals, and this one's compounded monthly, P, 1 plus, and this rate is 7.1%, so it's 0 0.071, compounded monthly, raised to the 12 times T, 
I'm going to put just this in my calculator because I want to know percentage rate. When I do, I get 1.07336. And what I get for that is 7.34% rate. So that one's a little bit better rate of return. Okay. Let's try the next one. B equals... P, don't know any of that, 1 plus the interest rate is 0 0.0705 because I have to move the decimal place. And this one is actually continuous. I keep doing that. So I'm not even going to use that part. I'm going to do P. I'm going to use base E. Sorry about that. I keep doing that. So it's E to the 0 0.0705 T. All I need to do is put in my calculator this right here to see what that gives me as a rate. And when I do, I get... 1.07304, subtract the 1, move your decimal place, so that's 7.30%. So now if I was going to rank them, this one right here is the best, and this one is the worst. So I can rank them as well by percentage rate. So the B is the best, then next would be C, and then A, and it's based on the percentage that I would actually be getting using those options. And the last one on this lab is 6. It says, our bank pays 5% interest compounded annually. Whoops, I hit it. I'm sorry about that. And another bank pays 5% interest compounded continuously. Given a deposit of $10,000, what is the difference in the balance between the two banks in eight years? Okay, so let's kind of set this up a little bit. I have our bank right here. And then I have another bank. And I'm going to kind of set up everything they said to do. So this first one said our bank, I want to find the balance when I'm going to put in a deposit of $10,000. Okay. And then it's compounded annually, so it's going to be 1. It's 5%, so I can put a 1 here. I mean, you don't really need it, but it makes it nice. And they want to know over 8 years, so it's 1 times 8. When I plug that in, I get my balance to be $14,774.60. Okay? Another bank is what they told us. They said the balance, they want to put the $10,000 in there, but this one's compounded continuously. I'm not going to make a mistake on this one. I'm going to use my base E because I'm so used to doing the other one. And this one, it's compounded 5%, so it's 0 0.05 over the eight years. Okay. And when I do that, I get my balance to be $14,918.20. Now, what they want us to do is to see what is the difference in the balance between the two banks in eight years. So I basically have to subtract the two, and this one's more. So I'm going to take the $14,918.20, subtract the $14,774.60, to see what is the difference monetarily. So it's $143.60 more our bank does, excuse me, another bank does over our bank because the continuous and it's 5%. So I hope this helps you. I hope you did it without uh, looking at this, but if you need this video to make it better for you, I hope it worked so that you can understand